Well, first came the newspapers, then radio, and then 50 years ago this month, you could watch regional news on TV. Since then, all the major news stories from the eastern counties have appeared on the small screen. We've had floods, droughts and blizzards, general elections and tragedies, such as the Soa murders and the death of Princess Diana. We've also had the lighter moments. Here are just some of the highlights from the Look East archive. It's the early 60s. The shadows are in the charts and the BBC East film cameras are getting to grips with a daily news service. A parade of young seamen also greeted the Admiral of the Fleet, Lord Mountbatten of Burma, at the Royal Hospital School at Holbrook near Ipswich. The M1 hasn't been open for long, traffic jams haven't been invented and traditional industries are beginning to disappear. I can see that you're in serious trouble. What's going to happen? As we've known herring fishing at Lowestoft, I don't think there will ever be any more. With Edison Lighthouse at number one in 1970, Look East reports on Prince Charles going to Cambridge. Other big stories of the day, the growth of the new city built in Keynes and the exploration of the North Sea. Louise Brown, who became known as the first test tube baby, is born in 1978, thanks to the work done at Bourne Hall in Cambridgeshire, while doctors at Papworth pioneer the use of transplant surgery. Earlier on today, apparently, a woman rang the BBC and said she heard that there was a hurricane on the way. Well, if you're watching, don't worry, there isn't. In 1987, gales which sweep across Britain cause chaos in this region. Vehicles are blown over, power lines come down, and in Rendlesham Forest, a million trees are torn down in just two hours. A year later, these Look East pictures of a double-decker bus in a hole in Norwich go round the world. Good morning to you from Westminster. It's 6.30 on Wednesday the 28th of November, the day when the longest-serving British Prime Minister this century will be replaced by the youngest. Huntingdon MP John Major replaces Margaret Thatcher as Prime Minister. the death of Diana, Princess of Wales, and that of the Queen Mother. Dorothy Cornwell would go anywhere, anytime to catch a glimpse of the Queen Mother. For her, life will never be quite the same again. The first pictures of Ian Huntley in police custody. He'll be locked up for life for double murder. Look East covers the Soham murders and the Ipswich murders. Steve Wright was brought back to court this morning for one last time. The judge said there had been a substantial degree of premeditation and planning. He said it was clear this case demanded a whole life order. Turning to the defendant, he said, that is the order I make. You may go down. Here's the news. Coming to you every hour upon the hour. Here's the news. The news of the last 50 years in three minutes to the producers, researchers, librarians, the cameramen, Picture editors and engineers past and present, we say thank you and happy birthday, Look East. Well, we'll be joined in the studio now by Julie and Ian Masters, familiar to many viewers of Look East over the years. We'll be chatting to them both in a moment. But first, let's see how many of these faces and these moments you will recognise. Hello, the news now from Essex, Suffolk and Nuffolk. <laughs> Be no <laughs> yes, we'll be finding out why prospects are rather brighter tonight for thousands of stray animals. <laughs> <laughs> it was great fun working for Look East, and I'll never forget the people or their professionalism. Bedfordshire County Council inquiry into the case. Thursday, so barometer tonight. If you want to check it, it should be around a thousand. My thanks to Hugh Smith of Holt and Kate Holson of Ford and Heath Colchester for sending me these little and large bottles with uh, impossible nails and screws through pieces of wood to further tantalise my brain on how they did it. Oh, ah! <laughs> <laughs> that always makes me feel ill every time I see it. And you were in China the other week, and 
They had a, a copy of that there. Yeah, they did. I was doing uh, a course on investigative journalism for Chinese journalists, and they said, oh, look what we've got. <laughs> uh, where'd you get that from? Global fame, you see. <laughs> Absolutely. Did, did some of those big stories bring back, uh, you know, the, the stories that you covered during your time here? Oh, yes. I mean, uh, there, we did some fantastic stories back in the 70s and the 80s, because in those days we had our sister, or would it be mother programme, I'm not quite sure, but nationwide, and uh, I used to have a dual contract in those days to do the job that you do so fantastically well between you. And also, I had to work for Nationwide as the East of England reporter. So we did some pretty big stories. I remember working with dear, dear Tony Scase on The Cambridge Rapist, and that was a story that went on for a long time. And the memorable one that uh, I can never forget is the day that Doc's Red Army, Doc's Red Army, Tommy Doherty's Manchester United supporters, they were called Doc's Red Army at the time. Of course, you'd have been in pigtails, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't know. And, Don't be uh, ageist. <laughs> no, I'm sorry about that, Stuart. Uh, I'm allowed to be at my age now, believe me. And um, uh, I was the reporter assigned to cover the story of the Manchester United reporters who came, uh, supporters who came to Norwich and ripped the town apart. It resulted in the camera crew and myself getting chased down a blind alley with knives and uh, bicycle chains, and we really were in a mess because we'd, we'd been chased into a, uh, a dead end. And I thought, oof, this is going to hurt. We, we're going to have to fight our way out of this. There are about eight or nine of them. And uh, suddenly at the end of the alleyway, five or six police dogs with their handlers appeared. And I was never happier to see an Alsatian dog in my life, <laughs> believe me. I bet you've never had people showing their bras back. <laughs> what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those people who ran across behind Julie showing their big bras. <laughs> I was totally oblivious. Yes, you were. <laughs> That's Thank the beauty goodness, of television. You can't see what's going on behind what you. What was the message? <laughs> I have no, no idea. I don't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> lovely well, to see you again. Thank and you very lovely much. Lovely to be here. Thank and you. if you liked our outtakes, you can find more of them on our website at bbc.co.uk forward slash look east. Embarrassing for everybody. <laughs> there will be no bras behind you tonight for the weather. Do you promise? <laughs> promise. <laughs> Well, today it has been a blustery one. As I said uh, last night, it was going to be. We've had gusts of uh, 35 to 40 miles per hour in some parts of the region. And out there at the moment, quite a lot of cloud. The thickest of that in the northeast has produced an odd isolated shower. And overnight tonight, I still think there's the potential for some of those showers to feed in off the North Sea into parts of Norfolk and Suffolk. But for most of us, it is a dry night with a further cloudier spells, but also some clear skies at times as well. And underneath those clear skies, especially in the west of the region, we could see lows of 4 degrees Celsius, and that is low enough for a touch of ground frost. And after a very blustery day, the winds will tend to ease down to light in strength in land, although they will stay fresher around the Norfolk and Suffolk coast. Now tomorrow, high pressure still with us, well and truly in charge tomorrow. No weather fronts to worry about, so it's looking generally fine and dry. Again, we might have an isolated shower in the northeast, but for most of us, a dry day with hopefully some decent spells of sunshine. A bit chilly, highs of only around 13 degrees Celsius, which is 55 degrees Fahrenheit, but generally lighter winds than today, a light to moderate northerly inland, but again the potential for something a bit fresher on the Norfolk and Suffolk coasts. So here's your five-day forecast. Uh, I think Sunday should be fine and dry, perhaps a bit more in the way of cloud and lighter winds on Sunday. Then Monday, thicker cloud, which could produce an odd bit of uh, light and patchy rain, but for most of us, another dry day. And the dry weather continues Tuesday and Wednesday, although we could have some rain on Tuesday night, but there's now a bit of a question mark over that, so I'll keep you posted when I see you again on Monday. And I mentioned earlier in the programme, some of us could see the first proper autumnal frost on Saturday night, and there's the reason why we have the potential, especially in the west of the region for temperatures to fall down as low as two degrees Celsius. And that's your forecast. Very good. Thank you very much indeed. Now, we've got a, a big event uh, in Cambridge a week on Sunday, an evening with Stuart White. Susie is coming. We're going to tell you what she's going to do on the night. <laughs> yes. and, and you've got something very special that you're going to do, Some, something world shattering. Well, <laughs> yes, I have a, a world exclusive, a very special guest, but unfortunately, my lips are sealed. Yes. Right, OK, but you'll be there, Susie will be there, and we hope you'll be there as well. It's intriguing, isn't it? It is. It's an evening with Stuart White. It's, uh, details of how you get the tickets are on the screen. That's it from all of us here. Thanks for your company. We'll see you next week. Have good a good night. weekend. Bye. Good